Welcome to Sticky Interviews. I'm Nathan Simmons, Senior Leadership Coach and Trainer for MBM, Making Business Matter, the home of Sticky Learning. We are the provider of leadership development and soft skills training to the grocery and manufacturing industry. The idea of these interviews is to share great ideas, great concepts and great ways these skills are being used to help you be the best version of you in the work that you do. Welcome to the show. Today I am speaking with an interesting, exceptional and very focused individual. I've seen some of his posts on LinkedIn, I've seen the interviews on the BBC News and I had to reach out and have a conversation with this gentleman about his work, what he's doing. Right now in the midst of COVID-19, if we're in the middle of it, the beginning of it, the end of it, I have no idea. With the stresses that we are, the, the services, are, our national services are experiencing, Oliver stepped up in this, pivoted with his business idea, and is supporting them with fresh fruit and vegetables and providing this to NHS workers because they're under so much stress, they're not able to think and make healthy decisions about what they're doing and their grocery shopping. And he's stepping in with a charity organization that makes this happen for them at their doorstep, delivering them fresh fruit and vegetables at the hospitals, at source, at location, to help them so they can, or they can focus their thinking onto the most important task, which is making sure people live. Um, I don't think I can be any more explicit about that, to be honest, Oliver. Um, no, and that's I, pretty good. And, and I said this before, and I was going to say it again, <laughs> from me and from everyone you already you're helping, no doubt you're getting loads of thanks for this. I want to say thank you from us, from everyone else that you've touched on this. You're doing incredible work. Please, look, explain why you do what you do, what you're doing in probably a clearer way than I could ever imagine to. Well, uh, I appreciate your support. Um, you know, on, on this Nathan, and anyone's interested in it, that's that's great. Um, and and uh, you know, it, it it really helps keep us all going. So this all started off uh, at Harvest for Heroes. I found well, I found myself like lots of people at the moment with a fair bit of downtime that had been imposed on me, um, or, or I should say, working from home. Um, and and, and it, with working from home, a, a, a real slowing down of my business, you know, with all the will in the world, there's only, there only so much you can do at this time because everyone else is busy. I work with the NHS in my professional life, so they've all been dragged away on things far more important than talking to me. So I found myself with a bit of time on my hands. Um, and I wanted to do something for my local hospital, which is in here in London, King's College Hospital. Um, I've got a lot of love for them. My, Two of my children were born there. My son, Henry, was born a couple of years ago uh, there with a rare form of spina bifida and a really stressful time for us all. Um, looking back, uh, when he was a year old, he was taken in to be operated on when he was a bit stronger. And their rock star neurosurgeon, Basil Zavian, and his team fixed him. So seven hour operation, Henry's downstairs you know, running around now. So just amazing just amazing and I, i'm always i would say out of all of the professions that i watch um i think i think surgeons are, are right up there in terms of you know me talking as someone who struggles to wire a plug you know or hang a picture um you know the the the, the, the amazement for these people and when it's your own kid it's even it's even more so so they fixed him i've got a lot of love for the hospital I, I literally phoned them up one afternoon and just said look what can i do for you I said, you know i'm sitting here um the family are driving, uh, we're all driving each other mad. Can I come down and do something? Can I do some driving, volunteering? Can I bring you some cakes, coffees, you know, anything? I just spoke to one of the people I knew at the hospital. They came back to me and, uh, and the feedback I got was that they're being inundated with very lovely, but very, uh, not very healthy stuff. So they uh, had, uh, they were overdosing on Greggs and, uh, and donuts and, and stuff like this, which is all well and good. But they said what they were short of was general fresh produce, fruit, vegetables, um, and general groceries. Um, and that was, if, if I was going to, uh, you know, make a contribution of some kind, then that would be very much welcomed. In my ignorance, I said, well, how did that work? Where are you going to cook all the stuff? You're not cooking there. And they quite rightly pointed out that it was after the long, you know, laborious shifts with frontline doctors, nurses, and, and anyone else, if I had some stuff to take home with them. Um, we all saw the, the crying nurse on TV the other day that, you know, couldn't get any groceries. They finished all sorts of hours. So that, 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 was, uh, that was the thinking. I got a tap on the shoulder from Rachel, my partner, who said to me, we've just got one of these lovely fruit and veg boxes from New Common Garden Market. 
where all of the traders are sitting around because the restaurants, pubs and hotels are shut. So they're now trying to, to keep their businesses alive by directing into people's homes. And we had a, this lovely box of produce. Well, why don't you send them one of those down? So that's what kicked it off, really. I then remembered that I had a friend who I worked with some time ago, Darren Burrows, who had, him and his father had worked in New Covent Garden Market, the biggest you know, fruit and veg market in the UK. So a couple of generations there. And I phoned him up and I said, look, I, I, have you got any ideas around this? Um, I can see a demand there. I want to do a good thing, but I just don't know how any of this works. And I also reached out to a couple of suppliers, some who were more enthusiastic than others. Some I had said Chase and some who came back to me. Anyway, Darren knew uh, lots of people in the market. And I basically said, well, go away and see what the most fresh fruit and veg and provisions that you can get in a box for the lowest amount of money is. And he went off and did that. And the, I thought of a name that afternoon, Harvest for Heroes, which I'm, you know, I do, that's one of the things I've tapped off the back for. I think it's got quite a ring to it. And I sort of got a, a Zoom thing going. I wrote a few mates in. So I've got Darren on a Zoom and I, I got the chap that's doing the website for our business at the moment on there. Um, and I got a friend of mine who worked for Facebook and another chap who was a management consultant and who were also had loads of time on their hands like me. And I just thought I'd get a few brains together and, and, and give them my idea and see what they think. I was used to talking to hospitals all day. Darren's used to fruit and veg. You know, some of them are more of a fan than me with social media. Um, and the chap with the website and branding. And he was really keen because he said, I'd love to get involved in a project like this. This is, this is what I want, you know. And we were all loving to get involved in a project that doesn't make us any money, but it's got this feel-good factor. That's what was great about this. You know, I've run the marathon for charity and raised a few quid for bowel cancer and done a few things, but I've never done anything like this. I'm not a serial, you know, uh, fundraiser. But I think looking at look everyone's pictures on Zoom, every, I've never seen everyone so excited about something that couldn't, that, that wasn't a massive commercial venture for us all. And everyone would said the same thing, oh, I really want to get involved in something like this. And we did. We had a chat, we formed it, we, we uh, got the domain, we Ollie went off and started doing the branding and the website and, and whatnot. I started Just Giving page and we started speaking to family and friends. That's a, bit, a little over two weeks ago. Uh, and we have now raised um, somewhere in the region of £27,000. We've been out to see 16 hospitals delivering these fruit and veg boxes. And it's, uh, it seems to be being received really well. We've been on uh, BBC News, we've been on a couple of radio things, had a couple of articles on us. Uh, and it's quite a simple idea, but it seems to be being received really well. And we're having a blast doing it. It's quite a big baby to carry now. So <laughs> I'm starting to realise that, you know. But it's a nice challenge. So that's us, yeah. And the... It's, the bit that gets me is the team building bit and how quickly everyone's moved on it. And one of the things I do a lot of coaching on is talking to people that are doing jobs that actually doesn't fulfill them. They're doing it for the paycheck or they're, uh, and they get to a certain point in their life where they, they don't feel like they're creating an impact with their lives or they want to get promoted or whatever it is. And like you said, you just got a group of professional people that have got different expertise in different places, put them in a room, come up with this idea and everyone's gone, this feels really good. I want to do this. And it's got nothing to do with money. And one of the things when I'm teaching people yeah. about motivation is it's actually not about the money. It's, it's never about the money. No, there is always something that people, there's a, there was a job out there that everybody would pay someone else so they could do it. And I asked that question, what's that job that you would pay someone else for you to do? And they, they, they will come up with different ideas. And right now for, for you as a team, as as that that um, as that team's growing, it's about the fulfilment. It's about how good that feels. Mm. It's about the um, the contribution you make to someone else. It's the look on their face when you give them that fresh fruit and veg, the healthy alternatives. Because I can be, yeah, I can completely agree. And um, I'm not. Um, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, so they're, they're, um, they're Nathan. I'm not. I wouldn't describe myself as an airy fairy going on about my feelings all the time type of person. I'm really not. And there are two things around this. I mean, what, what, um, and I spoke to one of my old school teachers the other day, showed a bit of interest in the good life. I've spoken to him 25, 30 years. 
But the, the main thing around this was just the doing it. So we had all of these guys and all these ideas. But what I think has made this happen is us just saying, let's just do it. Feels right, let's do it. And not, because we could have analysed this to death, you know, by which time COVID, the coronavirus thing would be over and no one gets any fruit and veg had they wanted it. And we could have discussed every little nuance of this. And, and, and I'm a bit of a, unless it's right, you know, it, it bugs me. And no, let's not send that email yet until we've spoken to everyone we need to speak to, got everyone's input. And I was encouraged to not be like that. And that was one of the good things. We just did it and we just started doing it. So that's the, 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 the thing that's, I suppose, got it up and running. And I can't take credit for that, really. And, 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 and as far as the feel-good thing goes, you know, I've been a salesman all my life you know i should have worked harder at school perhaps you know maybe i'd yeah, be a professional a, a, a barrister or anything but i haven't so i've had to make make a living by uh, selling and convincing people that what i'm offering or telling them to do is the right thing you know and it's exhausting and, I, and i've been um all about job satisfaction i've had sales jobs that i like the, the one i've currently got with which is a healthcare company but it's it, it all comes back to sales and winning business and, and clients. Um, but I would say I've been burnt out over the period of my life, you know, at least half a dozen times, selling various things with different businesses I've had, some that have worked, some that haven't. It's all been very, you know, quite chaotic, made lots of mistakes. Um, and, uh, and, 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 but, but doing this, I don't want to sound cliche. It really has given me a spring in my step. It made it, 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 it gets my another cliche juices flowing. I'm going to mention twenty cliches now because I can't think of any other way to articulate myself. But it really, it really does. Um, you know, it really makes me feel good that we're doing a good thing. It excites me as much as any amount of pound notes ever had. Um, and uh, and it really has changed my way of perhaps I think it's changed everyone's way that they look at work and life. I think it's going to be done at the other side. I don't think there's any question there, whatever happens. But it's 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 made me um uh put more emphasis on uh you know, my emphasis on other areas of what I really care about. And whether that's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing, whether it means I'm gonna take my foot off the gas in some way, um, or I'm I'm not gonna be the killer salesman that maybe I thought I was once, maybe. Or my 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 suspicions are that, you know, the 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 the, the uh, just in two weeks the, the conversations I've had doing this and the communication and the love, if you want to use a, a, that word, um, is far more valuable than, you know, five thousand cold calls. Both the way I look at it and, and by results. Yeah. Sorry, but yeah. yeah. As you're saying that is, you and I have led certain kinds of life, and all our experiences have led us to this moment. You can't, you know, everything that's happened before has led up to a moment, and and every thought leads up to a decision being made. And right now, in the middle of this, you've gone. Hold on a minute. What can I do in this situation? How can I pivot? How can I help? What's important here? And you've made a decision on that. Now, all your sales skills over here, and all the things you've done. It's like you say that burnout you experience, the overwhelm, the anxieties and stresses that go with that, are kind of triggers and indications of potentially where you're actually designed to be. They're nudges for you to move into something else. You know, whether you choose to pay attention to them or not, or whether you go sideways into the same job but under a different name, which often we do, you're going to constantly get that reminder. And like you say, without being airy fairy, that, that love, those faces you see when you walk into that hospital and deliver those goods, that's absolutely priceless. Um, mm -hmm. But through the struggles that you go through as an entrepreneur, salesman, a business person, all those sorts of things, um, it's then looking back over your life and going, ah, now I understand why I learned that. Now I understand why I learned that. And you make almost every job becomes like an apprenticeship where you're learning these skills. And one of the key yeah. things you talked about there, which so many people lose sight of, I don't know how this works. Except then you assembled, you build a team around you, yeah, uh, and you get the team building in place so that you have the right people around you to say, how does that work? Oh, Darren, or this guy's name, okay, great. Okay, I don't understand social media. Who around me knows social media? I'll go and ask that person. Where 95% mm. of the world, especially in the Western Hemisphere, will go... Yeah, okay, I don't know that. I won't ask because I don't want to look stupid. I don't want to be made to feel stupid. So they don't, they don't step out. We have that awful phrase of sticking your head above the parapet. Well, mm. 
the analogy says that if you're sticking your head above a parapet, you're inside a castle and you're under attack. Well, actually, it's not about feeling like that. It's about saying, Do you know mm. what, I need some help. I've got this idea. Yeah. It's a bloody, I think it's a bloody good idea. Let's sound this out quickly. And like I said, all these people are sitting around picking their ears in the best possible way, like waiting for something to happen. And boom, you're in and you do some good. Um, I think that's phenomenal. What's yeah, for- I, yeah, I agree. I was going to say on, on that, I, another element of that, and I've been guilty of this, and I'm still not very good at it, to be honest with you, is letting go of the baby. So I've had business, you know, and, and, and I know I'm rubbish at loads of things. I know I'm, I'm lousy at them. But there's always something in me that thinks, oh, I need to sit here and work out how to fill out this, you know, this Google spreadsheet thing. And that is just not my strength. But I'll sit here and work it out because somewhere in, sometimes somewhere in your mind, you think no one else is going to do it or no one's going to be, do it as, as well as you, even though you know you're lousy at it. And there is an element of that, you know, and I'm, and I'm learning this as well. People are not idiots and I'm not that clever. So, you know, let's, let's try and, you know, and, and there is an element of that as well. You know, I, I can spend four hours doing something that might take someone else 20 minutes. You know, and what is the point of that? I, I, but I'm still, I still do it, and I still learn the hard way. But you do have to, um, and it all comes back to your thing about team building, you, you, you do have to play to your strength and, and give other people the credit that they're going to be able to, to pick the ball up and I'm, I'm learning that and sometimes I, I, I there's no reason for me to do it not because I think I'm better than anyone or I'm selfish or I want to guard things it's, I think it's just a habit sometimes isn't it and I find myself sometimes muddling through things and thinking oh what am I doing you know and then you pick the phone up and make one call and, and every, the world's light again you know and, and everyone's you know having a lovely time but yeah <laughs> there is that and do you know what in this conversation i have to say i love Oliver, your brutal honesty about yourself about this and your brutal honesty about you know that the frustrations that you experience as a leader as a business person you know in this environment but also that honesty of picking up the phone and, and getting someone else involved um it, it's just a great it's it's then relearning the lessons every time okay it feels horrible and then you pick the phone up faster and then next time it feels horrible you pick, and you and you just keep shortening that distance to mark like that shorten that route to market because that is it's like it, it's like well how do i get to this situation faster i've got this problem who do i know okay phone them get them involved. i'm still trying to learn my lessons with hangovers that i've had uh, is um and how not and, and why i've got the hangover i'm still struggling with that a little bit but maybe some things you learn you know better than others i'm hoping i won't struggle in, in the business arena but you're absolutely right in what you say yeah absolutely so leading on from that so what is the objective as it stands at the moment for harvest for heroes well we're at a bit of a we're at some interesting time um so the objective to start with was doing something nice for anyone at King's College Hospital. And we, we fulfilled that and we've been going back, we've been back a few times and that's great. Um, as I mentioned before, we didn't have a very, we didn't have the time to put an accurate business model or game plan or whatever you want to call it together. So we just wanted to get some money in from you know my mum and dad and Darren's friends and whatnot. And then we wanted to buy some of these boxes and go out and deliver them, which we've been doing. Now we've sort of got two, just over two weeks in, we're now at a point where um, I think we're, we're too big to be the kids going down the road with the sponsorship form, or say too big. We've possibly raised too much money and, and too much work's gone into it to be, look, to be looking at it like that. But we're not, you know, we haven't raised a million pounds. We, you know, we, uh, and we're not, we're not a charity, by the way. We're a crowdfunding initiative at the moment. So we're also now are starting to have conversations around, um, okay, w- what do we do with this? And the things I think that are great about it is I love the branding. I love what Ollie's, I love the name and I love the branding that Ollie's put together that I think it looks really good. Now, whether that's relevant, I'm not, again, I'm not an expert at charities or fundraising, but I, I think it's a nice vehicle for me or anyone else who, who could do something with it. I think it's, um, uh, I just want it to be doing a good thing. And, and, and I wouldn't like it to be, I wouldn't like what we've done to be wasted if it could be used to do a good thing. And it, that might not even be with me, or it might be a joint venture. So we're starting to explore that now and, and look at what we've got and what we do. And it's sometimes you have more time to do various things. It's sometimes all efforts have to be on getting these, speaking to hospitals, getting the, their interest and going and seeing them, talking to the Covent Garden market and van drivers and so on. And then, 
you know, we seem to have had a bit of a, an up and down. We raised loads of money, and then we, we went out and got some boxes out and so on. And then I spoke, and it was so well received. But then with inquiries dried up a bit, or I spoke to maybe a couple of hospitals that were really grateful, but they sort of said, oh, we didn't have anywhere to store this. And I went a bit flat. And then I started to think, uh, oh, we've got loads of money in the bank, but the, do they want, do, do the people really want what we're doing? Am I having to sell this stuff into places with all this money? And, it, and that's what business is like, it's a bit like this, you know, you, 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 you um, it's particularly in sales, you have a really good week and you think you're Richard Branson, or maybe they're better examples at the moment, but you think you're, um, you're absolutely on fire and your business is worth billions of pounds and then you have a lousy week and you think, I wouldn't be able to give this away. And it's an emotional game, isn't it? So sorry to digress, so, so it was a bit like that with this, and then suddenly we had a, a load of interest, maybe the BBC thing or something else, and suddenly we were being flooded with, you know, can you help us? And that, that was brilliant, and, and it was hospitals, but also care homes, who are the, uh, I think, the forgotten heroes, the care home workers in all of this. Um, they were in harm's way as well, they're earning very, very little money, and it's not... Um, I mean, it's a heroic job that they're doing. So although we made this about the frontline heroes, we're also having conversations now about what, who do we open it up to? You know, we've been to see a couple of care homes today just because it's just a compelling story. And I don't, you know, I'll put an update on the, on the, from the fundraising page today. I don't think anyone's going to get in contact and say, I thought the money was going to, to nurses and not people who are working in care homes. But, you know, I'll do that. So, uh, to answer your question, because I'm rambling again, um, we're looking at lots of elements of it. I wanted to keep doing something good if the demand is there, and it seems to be that this is a good thing. It's quite a simple idea. There are others doing similar things, but they're charging for this stuff, and we're doing it via donations. There are other ways it could go, you know, care homes, other key workers in the in the medical space, you know, community health people that are all working incredibly hard. Um, we could uh, form a joint venture with someone who are doing a similar but slightly different thing. So I've had conversations around that. Um, I spoke to some of the Public Health England, who was on the board of, uh, of uh, a care team, and they do a similar thing, but they hand out uh, Olivia Rose, I think they call it. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They do fruit and veg vouchers. You should look at that afterwards. So they identify vulnerable people in, in, in the community, and they give them vouchers that can be spent on fruit and veg at farmers' markets. And this came out literally from a conversation because uh, I thought I was talking to someone at Public Health England to say, is there any way you guys could throw a few quid at this? And then it came out that he was a, a trustee of this charity that was very similar to us. So that turned into another conversation. So um, we are just working away, trying to put some process around what we're doing now. Um, and sort of in that period where we're not quite sure where it's going to go um, and trying to make the right decision. And we're all ears on that. I think it's one of those things from what you're saying is until you start scratching the surface and looking into it and speaking to people, all of a sudden you speak to one person that knows someone that does this and all of a sudden you get that other bit of clarity, um, which you can then bolt on. And as you said, if you've done that at the start, oh, I've got this idea, but I'm going to go and speak to this person and I'm going to speak to this person. And then maybe I have to speak to Jim over there. who's going to sit and send me over to um, uh, Harry over here. And next thing you know, COVID-19 is done and it's actually 2021 and you haven't helped anyone. Whereas in Absolutely. this situation, you're kind of, it's starting now, get perfect later. You know, you, you, mm. you know, you get the ball rolling and I've done it with, even inside leadership teams, if you get a bit of momentum, people are less likely to say no to you once you've got a bit of momentum because they think someone else has already told you yes. And the fact that you turn up on a hospital's door and say, I've got this box of stuff over here and they're like, oh yeah. And some, there's like a subconscious shift of, oh, so-and-so must have sent them. Yeah, we'll take that. Thanks very much. And then it mm. then starts to build up the momentum. And then yeah. you can start make, doing the tweaks and adjustments. And I think it's huge. And I think it's, you also talked about, it's almost that selling things for free. And I actually found that harder. So when I qualified as a leadership coach, trying to sell people coaching sessions for free people almost or don't see the value in it. They don't have a perceived value because there isn't a price ticket on it. And it makes it harder to sell them stuff because there isn't a ticket to it. And they can't go, oh, that's worth 2,000 pounds. Yes, I'll have that for free. Thanks for it. You know, it's very difficult for them. Mm -hmm. um, so like you and I is, 
I went the route and I did my coaching hours in palliative care in hospices with the hospice leadership team. I mm -hmm. have then subsequently gone into the, the teaching schools at Royal Marsden, Royal Marsden School and taught leadership skills there as well because it's absolutely the right thing to do. You know, it's, mm -hmm. we have access to these things, we've got an idea and controversial, go a little bit political here, regardless of whether, you know, what taxes we pay, the NHS, you know, requires a certain amount of funding, taxes go so far, all those sorts of things. These people do phenomenal work and they need support in one way, shape or form, especially now, but at the same time, always. I personally have been under the knife mm. five times now, maybe six times um, for various mm. different abdominal surgeries. Mm. Um, and if it wasn't for those people, I potentially wouldn't be here right now. If it wasn't potentially for the for the mm. work they're doing, you know, they wouldn't have looked after, like you said, the care workers, looking after my grandmother, looking after my cousins, you know, elderly relatives. Yeah. And it, there's a certain level of thanklessness that goes with that. Um, mm. And making that contribution of a box of fresh fruit and vegetables, and as I said earlier, when you haven't got the cognitive functions because you're tired, because you're stressed, and all those sorts of things. The moment you go into a supermarket, if it is fully stocked, you're less likely to choose the fresh fruit and vegetables and, the, and the make the healthy choices. You'll make an unhealthy choice because it's easier. It's higher in salt. It's higher in sugar. It's a quick fix. Yeah. But then your health suffers, suffers internally as a result of you giving your heart and soul to all these other people. Mm. Massive. And that was the driver, I suppose. That was one of the person who, who put me on to, you know, this being maybe a good suggestion. You know, they want to keep their doctors and nurses healthy. You know, it's it's really important part of this. You know, there there are there are um, there are a number of for, for a few aspects of what makes potentially makes this a reasonable idea, and that's you know the, the business element of the, of the suppliers in New Covent Garden market, you know, ticking over and having someone to go and drive out to and supply stuff to, um, again, keeping this, the, the, keeping them healthy, the, the convenience element of people being able to get what they want without queuing up maybe in, in, in the supermarkets or going out at ungodly hours and not knowing whether they'll be somewhere open. But also, yeah, the, all the benefits you just said, the health benefits. And if given an option, you know, we're not all uh, we're not all Gillian McKeith, are we? Given an option, some of us will take the unhealthy option, particularly when you're running around and you're stressed. You know, we we know what that's like. You know, and you're grabbing stuff and, and you're you're craving certain things. Well, a lot of us will take the unhealthy option. You know, so the fact that you know, particularly the the the, the, the fruit element of this and and the uh, you know the, the basics is, is going down really well. It's probably making people have to eat slightly healthier stuff you know so i think those elements of it of it all work we had an element we had a, an, a point where we started to be a bit too bespoke with people so we were saying you know they were saying to us oh we love the fruit and veg boxes but we really liked the um those at those one of the two types of apples that you had and but they were more popular than the onions and and i started sort of it being me drive myself mad and start tailoring all these boxes and i thought ah uh, how are we going to do this? And then, and then I had a few calls at hospitals. They went, no, we're working it all out. It's fine. It's all going. So just keep doing what you're doing. So we, we, we managed to ride that blip out. But yeah, I think uh, the health of our, especially when they're, when they're faced with this, um, with this disease every day, um, and I'm sure a large part of it, I'm not a clinician, is to do, you know, you need a strong immune system to be in, in these big, these areas of huge viral loads in harm's way every day i think that everyone's uh, you know supportive of, of them being in the best nick they can absolutely and a couple of things random thoughts coming made i'm going to share them on on in this conversation one is you know when you're looking at the unhealthy food choices you've got stress kicking in your immune system starts to shut down because your stress levels are up that's a neuroscience a scientific uh, fact we know that you make poor food choices, you start you know, shoving loads of sugar in, loads of unhealthy additives, et cetera, et cetera. When that stress starts to drop down or, start, or you get the, the sugar starts to build up as a, uh, as a background problem to your immune system, one of those two things is gonna snap. Either the stress level comes off and the immune system kicks back in and it can't deal with it, or you're already corroding the system from the back there with the unhealthy food choices. And as a result of doing that, you're kind of your you're fighting a losing battle at that point. You're not keeping these people, these key workers, 
to the, the, the highest of their capacities physically, mentally and emotionally to do what they need to do right now. Um, the other random thought that popped into my head is Riverford. We have a Riverford box. Let's be honest, you know, there's a few of us that use the veg boxes and get meat supply from this. They do phenomenal little recipes that go out with the boxes once a, once a week or whatever. Um, like you say, it's, it's almost ridiculous that you kind of have to force or strong arm someone to make a healthy food choice. But you almost want to make it as easy as possible and, and maybe have someone provide a recipe that maybe covers two or three of the ingredients in your book. So when they get it, it's just like, oh, there's even a recipe that tells me what to do because actually I don't want to think about this right now. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and there's other avenues that can like, you know, that spur off of that as a tangent. Phenomenal. I think it's hugely important. It's hugely needed, regardless of what's going on um, politically, economically. These people are doing great work now, before, afterwards. We know that, you and I, um, for various different reasons. And they're super important. That's another thing, actually, Nathan. Is, is there another conversation we've been having around this, which you just touched on? Is there life to this? Uh, is there life and how? And what is the, does that look like for this, this enterprise after? coronavirus whether that's in a week or you know uh, six months or a year where do we take it after this and i think um you, you know I, I, so we all had differing opinions on this one of my friends said well i, I can't see how people have, with all the with all the charitable organizations around i can't i'm not sure if when we come through this people are going to be particularly inspired at buying fruit and veg for doctors and nurses not that it's not a nice thing to do and then but i've heard other differing opinions of which i'm sure yours will be one of them which is it's absolutely needed and they're still doing this job and they're still doing what they're doing and it, and it does need a push and so that, that's another uh, question how um although it was coronavirus that kicked this off how how de dependent if you want to it sounds like a business there but how dependent is it as its lifespan on coronavirus or what do we then pivot into again if there is a good thing to be done and when it can be used, how do we, you know, what do we do with that? I think it's one of those, th it's one of those things you look at the business model as it is. And this is, you know, a different conversation, but there is always a crisis for businesses. You know, 12 weeks ago, they had a crisis uh, in, in the UK, wherever now, six months ago, every business had a crisis going on six months from now, there'll be another crisis going on. And it might not be that you're looking for harvest for heroes. It may not be that actually in six months time it's nurses. Maybe it's firefighters in a certain district or certain area uh, dealing with the situation. You look at Australia with the bushfires that happened this year. They've unprecedented bushfires. These guys need support. Um, and it might be that harvest for heroes isn't just about nurses. It's actually funneling those support to the people that are under the most stress that are giving us the, the highest level of protection at that point in time. Yeah, because we as a um, not even a nation as a community need to band together to support these people because they're trying to do things that we not even in our wildest dreams would want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Categ categorically absolutely. makes me want to cry because I've got friends that are in um, fire services in Australia in these sorts of areas. They put themselves under immense amount of stress. And you know what? I just I'm in awe of what they do mm. because they do stuff that I would you know, romantically think that I would like to do, but you know what? Not a chance. Not not a effing chance. Couldn't agree more. Um, amazing. So look, I want to get into some team building stuff and talking about team, team building ideas because this is kind of soft skill. I don't think there's a soft skill about it. You've, you've focused at your unique superpower, which we've talked about into this, and you've brought these people together in phenomenal ways. And we're talking about teamwork examples and team building. Um, what do you think are the qualities of a good of good teamwork? Um, well, um, so teamwork, I think, is essential. We spoke a bit about holding the baby or letting go of the baby, whatever you want to call it. Um, mo most of my success uh, in, in where I've had success in in business has been around relationships. When I look back on it, friendships, love fun um for me rather than other people might build their success on process and um analytics and so on that i'm rubbish at all that stuff i'm rubbish so what i've managed to lean on is forming friendships relationships maybe being personable 
um, but, uh, man being passable as a strength, but not being uh, analytical or even the, even the best manager in the world or, or consistent, you know, all these things. So, I mean, I think good teamwork is, is um, I, think, I think it's about leadership, whether that is leadership because you just never miss a trick and you're so amazingly accurate all the time, or whether that's leadership because you inspire people, you know, or you, you, um, you're, you're good at geeing people up or you've got, you know, uh, you've got that Ernest Shackleton or, or Churchillian, uh, you know, um, ability to, to excite people or make them think, that, make them, make them uh, excited about a shared goal. So I think um, I think teamwork is 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 it, it, it is, under, is a number of things. I, for, for me, it's understanding that you need a team in the first place, and you need to let go, and you can't do it all yourself. That's that's a big part of it. And then I think it's about um, you know everyone. Uh, it's about relationships. I think it's about a shared goal, um, and, and I think it's about. Um, the first thing I said, I think it's about people liking each other and, and, and what you have to put in, you know, the, to make that happen. I'm sorry if I'm not even answering your original question and I'm rambling, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I, um, the, the, that's what I think. I was going to say, Oliver, you know, is it okay for me to share with everyone your unique superpower? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. So when Oliver and I got talking together, you know, we talked about um, mental health and, you know, I've had my challenges and I, I work with people and Oliver says, Oliver, I said, tell me what's going on. So Oliver goes crazy for about seven and a half minutes. And I'm just like, bloody hell. And I'm just absorbing all this information. And Oliver goes, I think I might just have a bit of a ramble. Um, I was diagnosed with ADHD two years ago. I was like, it's a unique superpower. And this is the element is at the same time, you may be going off on one of them and you may think you haven't answered the question. But proof's in the pudding. Sometimes you don't have to be able to describe things perfectly or define them to the letter, but it's the mm. action that causes traction. No, it's, it's, the, it's the, the intent and speaking to people and people feeling that intention. And they're not getting all airy-fairy and hippie. You know, they feel mm. the positive in the direction and they want to get involved and then they can start to look at things. The bit that you talked about there, it, it, it's kind of compartment um, to, to bullet point that out, talking about having a shared goal creating network being having friends having fun in what you're doing um, and i think those are the vital things um that shared interest and having everyone having a singular point of focus and knowing where that point of focus is going to go mm -hmm. that absolutely and knowing they'll feel that they'll all be happy uh, when you get to whatever that goal is yeah you know, that's important as well you know everyone's interest being aligned and um uh, being incentivized and happy getting to that point at the end you know i think that's important so i'm thinking about right now one question that i want to ask is what is a good definition of teamwork i'd like to hear an example if you've got one to hand potentially of of right now in the last three weeks of you doing what you're doing what your definition uh, what is a good definition of teamwork in your experience right now well i think it's uh, I th okay so in the context of what we're doing so we're a fundraising organization and everyone is driven by the, 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 the first and foremost, everyone is driven by doing a good thing. But then there's other things over and above that, which are possibly driving people. And then that's fine as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I said to you, Ollie, said, I'd love to get involved in a project like this because, it, because he's used to building websites in a commercial way and getting paid. And actually for his own self-development, and maybe even for the perception of his business, it's a good thing and it helps all round, you know. So he, he's, he's, he's driven by that. They're the things that are driving him. What a great case study to have with this. And we got on the BBC and we did it to help the NHS. And there's no money involved. And that's good. It makes him feel good and, and it looks good. Um, you know, other people might be enjoying the social media aspect of it. I'm enjoying going out and having conversations. I'm enjoying chief executives of hospitals giving me a pat on the back. People whose PA I couldn't even get on the phone three months ago. So there's an example. There you go. Business on a, from a and, and, and I'm in, and I'm driven by success. I'm driven. No, I'm driven by things. Uh, I'm quite competitive. So I'm driven. That's what drives me. I've never been driven by money. So when, I, when I've done, you know, been on the sales floor, whatever I've been selling or doing, 
I've never ever been driven by money. That, that comes as a byproduct of just wanting to be better than the bloke at the end of the desk that you don't necessarily see eye to eye with and, and like winding each other up all day. So that, I'm quite competitive and, I'm, and I just, if I do something, I really throw myself into it. And I'm, so, you know, I've been guilty in the past of them losing interest maybe and, um, you know, and that's why I've got a garage full of fishing rods and snooker cues and, and uh, you know, water skis and, and everything else. Because I start things and then, you know, get excited and they're, oh, I don't like this anymore. And I'm really hoping that won't happen with this. I really don't see the signs of that this time. But I'm driven by it being a success. So even though it's a fundraising thing, that's the little thing that's keeping me going. If you're going to do it, you know, get a fundraising competition. But let's make it a success. Let's get loads of money in and let's buy actually loads of hospitals. We get as many happy pictures as we can along the way. If it stops next week, what a great thing. So to bring that back to teamwork, definition of teamwork, I think it's everyone in our thing being motivated enough to be on the journey in the first place. And we're all good people. We all think it's a nice thing to do. But, you know, some people, if they've got a load of work, you know, from their personal life you know business life and they're relying on feeding their kids there needs to be something that makes them interested or invested in this other than it just being a nice thing to do and everyone's got their own little thing so i might be ultra competitive as i say ollie might think it's a wonderful thing to to, to have got behind you know another chap might, might have a different opinion but i think teamwork is about a shared goal and everyone having their reasons for getting there, being incentivized and being just as happy when you get there. And uh, uh, being motivated enough on that journey to stay on the journey to get to the, the bloody goal in the first place. I think for me, as you're saying that, I'm starting to realize, and I know this from working sales environments, numbers are numbers. You know, if you chase numbers, you're chasing a losing game because numbers are infinite. You're never going to get, you know, it's the emotion that you actually get from yeah. getting there. You know, it's not about achieving the goal. It's about the, the, the emotion you feel when you get there, whether it's the success of competitiveness, whether it's, you know, but it's the same energy that you get from getting to the CEO to sell them a box of veg, which you're getting for charity as it is, you know, you know, winning a competition on the sales floor. It's just that one of those has a slightly more nutritious backing to it. Um, one's a sugar hit and, and one's a decent set of min, uh, healthy vitamins and minerals and, and, and needed supplements. Um, and it's, about, it's then working out which one do you want to channel your energy into so you can continue that momentum on. Um, I totally agree. And just one last point on that, um, Nathan about your point about numbers whether that's sales numbers or pound notes you know uh, whatever that is it, it 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 doesn't and i'm really learning that. that's the biggest thing that's come from this that i'm really realizing that it just feels better to be doing something like this and i'm starting to look at it and 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 you know you, you look at some people who have built successful businesses and they've done it in um uh, they've done it in a, in a beard and a, and, a, and a scruffy old pair of shorts and they've done it with love and they've done it with uh, relationships and they've done it by being a good thing and being driven in a certain way. And I'm, I'm not always, I'm not that person or I haven't always been that person. I'm taking steps in that direction because of this. And then you've got the sharp, hard nose, you know, greed is good, you know, money never sleeps or, and all that nonsense or not nonsense because it does get it anyway. And... I've always looked at the sort of things, and we'd all rather be the the, um, the the chilled out, calm guy that doesn't buy his nails, has got, has made his billions that way. And I don't think anyone makes it any one way. You're the expert in this stuff, you know. But you know, some even not even the nicest people in the world have been ruthless. I'm sure in business, in the nicest of people. I really am starting to realise that, if, in terms of your own um, mental well-being, your own self-worth. Um, your own uh, 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 desire for feel-good vibes that maybe have done, just haven't been around for a lot of your life. I'm, I'm starting to see that there is a way that you can you can you can actually throw the uh, financial um, uh, forecasts out the window, and you can just start doing a good thing. Just like being competitive, uh, you know, success, money, and all this other stuff can follow that. It can also follow something like this just because you just feel great and you're making those relationships and you're forming those things and you might not even know what it is you're going to do you know but 
I've definitely taken a, I've taken a big step in that direction. You know, it feels good to be doing something good. And I'm not even thinking about money, but in some way these things all feed you and, I don't know, feed your ideas and change your perceptions. And I'm sure you can get success that way, if, if, if you know, as well. Agreed. And, and, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a very human thing. And like you say, the problem is, in that is the majority of people believe that um, money is a certain way. You know that you, you know that money never sleeps, and you have to be ruthless, and there's always competition, and you have to cut the competition out, and you can't win if everyone else is winning, and all that sort of mm. stuff. But actually, you know, you're learning from being in this sector. There's ways to create money almost from not nothing is the wrong bit. There, are, there is money there to be drawn on. When the intention's done in the right way, that money comes in and it feels good when that money comes in, rather than almost having to fight for it. And then once it's in, you've got them to go into the next fight and so on and so forth. When you go into this mindset of, of money and approach, the hustle and the grind almost drops off. Mm. Yes, it's still hard work. And at the same time, the hard work actually feels good. It doesn't mm, feel I like work. Agree. Because you're, cause you're, you're, you're looking at it in a totally different way. Whereas if you're constantly fight, struggle, fight, struggle, fight, struggle, that's when you get the overwhelm and burnout. Over here, yeah, you know, you are fighting a bit and you are, but you're enjoying the process. You can smile when you, you know, rather than going to the grind, you smile going through the process. And then you can come up with more ideas. Like you say, the ideas naturally come in. How do I give this project more legs? How does it extend out over here? Then you talk to people and so another idea comes in. It's like, oh, yeah. And the idea will morph and change to eventually it becomes the entity that it's going to become in the future. Completely agree. And you get, you, and also you, you, um, you know, you, you command just as much respect doing a good thing that's making you zero money more, you know, I would say, than you do, do doing certain other things, you know, that, that might be perceived as success or, you know, well, and, um, and, 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 and a lot of business, you know, I don't know why I brought this back to business, but, you know, you're a coach and you, you work in that world as well. I'm just trying to sort of overlay what we're doing over to my life in general and how this last, you know, few weeks has, has, has made me reflect. Um, but, yeah, you, you, um, you, you know, you, you, you're successful. One of the elements of success, success in business is, is relationships, isn't it? And how you feel about people and how you feel about yourself and who you, who's... Who, who, who you can talk to and who wants to talk to you and so on um and uh yeah i, I just think it's good vibes all around you know do, doing this and, and i'm learning a lot from it and leading on, good and, and this is what this, this whole situation is about is they talk about is is wrong they talk about the the meaning of chi of crisis in chinese means um danger and opportunity this doesn't by the way it's it's uh, one of those is fake news it actually means tipping point and it means, you know, danger or tipping point. And you'll get into a point where, you know, you're, you're tipping. You've got a choice of which way you want that to tip almost. Um, and you can carry on going down the road that you're going down. Or, you know, and it's, you know you're, you've got a choice. Or you can step back and go in a different direction. Or, or, this is what COVID-19 and any crisis situation gives us an opportunity to look at, to deeply reflect on why we do what we do. And, and the impact on why we do it for other people. And what's most important to us. What are the... Um, behaviors we want to be role modeling to our children what are the role you know does does the audio and the video sync up as i've heard said before you know when you're at work and i've said to leaders and i ask this question you know, the way that you behave at work and the things that you talk about how would your wife or your significant partner or your children react to the way that you speak when you're at work now if those two things don't match up there's something inherently wrong like, yeah. and it might be a small detail but then when you look at this like, well actually what do i want to do with this actually i want to do this thing and it's harvest for heroes because it does this and it feels like this oh now it's a different now you've seen what's possible because you've had an opportunity to deeply reflect look at what's yeah. out there in the world, and now you're seeing this potentiality and all of a sudden it started moving and all of a sudden you're, you, you know, you're potentially in that place of oh shit it's a thing and i can do yeah. this and then yeah. you it, it, then it almost becomes a necessity. It's not a maybe at this point. It's like, it's like, actually, I can see how far this can go. I can see the potential in this. Yes, it's big. Yes, it's scary. And at the same time, yes, it's very exciting. And it would be remiss of me not to move towards that in some way, shape or form. Because it's not about you anymore. It's about everybody else that gets one of those boxes. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna start crying. I'll start crying if I carry on down this road. You know, it, <laughs> are you an easy crier, Nathan? Like me? <laughs> I, I a little bit, but it's, it's when you get into the depth of those sorts of goals and things, that's when the emotion comes up because the goal becomes emotionally engaging. It becomes magnetic, yeah. and you can, yeah. and you know full well from the last three weeks of going to a hospital, and you can see the looks on people's faces when you do what you do when you're at your fundamental best. Mm. And that's, you're right. And, yeah, and I and I am. Um, I'm an easy crier as well. And it's funny. I, it's funny. I was um, I was talking to. I was talking about these care homes. Sorry for digressing a bit. No, no. But I, was, I was talking about these. I got a lovely message over the weekend about well, how about care homes. I've got about five workers. And this lady said, uh, um, you know, m m her mum had died in uh, a, a, a hospital. My dad had died in Medway Hospital, which was one of the ones we visited in, not far from you. Um, uh, uh, and they weren't allowed in to see, to see uh, the dad. And the mum was in a nursing home. So the dad was 91, good innings, you know, but the mum was 96. So none of them were allowed. I think that's the saddest thing about coronavirus. You know, none of them, uh, you know, you can't see your loved ones. You can't be there at the end. I mean, it's just terrible. It's so sad. And, and obviously then they had to break the news to the 96-year-old um, mum, you know, over the phone. And uh, I think that's the saddest thing about all of this. It just, it, it's just, you know, when people are telling you stories like that, um, it does touch you emotionally. It certainly does touch me emotionally anyway. And I'm an easy crier anyway. We, we just went outside to, to sing happy birthday to a bloke who's 91 because um, he can't get out. And so I'll send you a video after this, but his care has opened the window. And, and, and Rachel brings in, you know, bread and bits and bobs. And, and we got the whole street came out and sang uh, happy birthday to him. It, 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 and, 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 and it was, uh, it, it was quite, I'll send you a video of it. And then one of the neighbours I'd never met before, a couple of doors along, was to, then starting to tell me about her kids. And she had a son called Ollie who died in a car crash. And I don't want to get a too heavy here, but I'm just trying to you know, talk about community and, and all the stuff that feeds into this and might make you cry sometimes and so on. And then she was sort of saying, it's lovely to meet you and you, know, you would have been my age. And, and honestly, it was the hair was all, you know, goosebumps all over me. And, and it, was, but it, was, it was lovely. And if that's a snapshot of how being engaging, you know, I said, go and get a picture of him. And she ran into her house and came out with a picture of him. And I said, I think I recognise him maybe from when we were younger from the local pub. But it, it, it's that stuff. It, none of this is anything to do with business, which is where most of my focus has gone on in my life. But it's this stuff that, um, that touches you inside, you know. And, 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 um, and even if every business collapsed of everything, you know, when you, if you're operating in this way or you're... If you're, if you're getting more of this, whatever this is, this all this stuff, you know, if you're getting more of it, I think, you know, it, I don't, I think it goes a long way to sort of ass, assuaging whatever else is going on or collapsing around you or business stuff is going on. I mean, where it's a free for all at the moment, none of us know whether we've got a job, a business that's going to generate any money, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. that other stuff is, is is hugely important to me anyway, you know. And that was like, because you said you're an easy cryer, but obviously to you too, you know. And, but I think this is a human thing, and I think that COVID-19 is bringing about that humanity into what we do. Um, and that's important. And yeah, you digress, but this is where we're going with businesses. This is how we need to operate more as businesses, small, medium, and large enterprises. Um, you picked up on two, on two things. So my question now was going to be, what are the three most important things needed for effective teamwork in the workplace? You've already tipped one of them, it's relationships, for me personally. The other one was it's engaging. You know, like you say, going out in the back garden and singing happy birthday to a 91-year-old, it's engaging. Um, what's the one other thing then that is needed for effective teamwork in the workplace? Uh, I, would, I would probably think it's admitting your weaknesses. I know we touched on it earlier on, but, but be openness in terms of... Um, Admitting your weaknesses and being available to support other people's weaknesses. You know. I was going to say that's lovely. Yeah. I was going to say that's lovely in itself. I mean, that in a nutshell is, is absolutely perfect. Because <sighs> I've had, I've had, you know, I've, I've, I've had run-ins. I've had, um, I need to admit my weaknesses more, you know, my process and things like that have never been my strengths. And, um, 
and I've sort of, you know, in business in the past, I maybe I've butted heads with people, you know, and one of the problems where the teamwork has completely broken down, where the teamwork has completely broken down is there's nothing wrong. Yeah, I've got talents and they've got talents, but I'm saying, I do this and that, and I do this, and they're saying, "Well, you, we do this and that, and you're doing that." And there's a complete. They're, 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 you, you, you can have a complete. Um, uh, you, you almost feel you could, you know, hire a marriage counsellor sometimes for business, where someone just comes in and goes, "Look, you're really good at what you do, and you're really good at what you do, and you don't need to be beating this person up all the time, or, or, or justifying everyone justifying their their place here." You know, you go and do that, and you go and do that, and you don't touch that. And, and I think sometimes things break can break down in business and teamwork as a result of that. You know, so I think that's important. Nice relationships, engaging, admitting your weaknesses, and also supporting mm -hmm. other people in their weaknesses and bringing that together. Nice. Mm -hmm. Final couple of questions for me: yeah. Whose help and support do you need right now to get this message out even further? For Harvest for Heroes, um, I, well, I, I just it, I think um, it's difficult because we're in a time now where there are a lot of fundraising initiatives going on. We've all we've all had our arse handed to us by um, by a uh, lovely old uh, uh, military chap. Uh, Tom, what's the name? Can Tom Ball. Tom. Tom. Yes. I mean, wow. If you're going to get your ass worked in charity wars, then you want it to be by uh, by Commander Tom, don't you? I mean, it's phenomenal. So, I mean, what do we want to do with it now? If, if, if people believe, and you seem to, that there is, this is a good thing that we're doing, or there is a need, and, and, and I am really believing that more and more every day now, having had my blip, which I was honest about. You know, it comes down to um, raising money. I think that's where my focus is at the moment, because I'm speaking to more and more people, be it care homes, other hospitals, we're now uh, we're going, we're going national. So we're delivering on uh, Friday. We're going to Rotherham, uh, Manchester, uh, Southport, Northampton, Preston, and Calderdale and, uh, and Huddersfield. <clears throat> so I'm going to go up there and get in the car and go around with the lorry and shake hands with all these people. It's going to be a long old day, but that's what we're going to do. But there is a demand there. It is going national. Some of these places in the north are, 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 are quite, uh, you know, places quite deprived areas where they really do need this more, maybe than some of the boroughs in London we've already delivered. And it comes back to, well, to raising uh, awareness and, and donations. Sounds a bit crass, really, when I talk about it like that, but it does. I mean, I'm looking at things like businesses maybe sponsoring hospitals or, or, or um, people that can sponsoring hospitals that they've got, you know, a, a good relationship with or care homes, sponsoring a care home and trying to put things like that together. We just want to get funds to turn into fruit and veg and give it to where people are grateful and everyone's, everyone's a winner. Um, I'm, I'm fully aware that Businesses are struggling at the moment, and um, you know, uh, as are individuals. So I don't know if it's the best time to be doing a fundraising initiative. I mean, uh, Tom has proved us all wrong on that, but maybe I, I, I don't know. That, 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 that's the help I need to get this message out further. I think you're right in the sense that you know, Tom Moore has raised an astronomical amount of money, you know, for a good cause, doing what he does. Um, yes, there are some people that are struggling out there, and at the same time, there are other people there that have 50p to give, and or they have 50,000 to give. And yeah. it's you know, if you can find people that are able to donate small, large, or whatever into that pot, that's a benefit. And on the other side of it, if there are businesses in local regions of NHS trusts or hospices or whatever that wish to sponsor those locations at this time. Um, this is a prime opportunity to do that through Harvest for Heroes with healthy veg boxes going to people that need it so they don't have to think about their shopping and they can make healthier choices, which is going to help keep them moving forward for longer now and also in the future as well. Um, and we're looking into how you do that. I'm not an expert again at this. So I'm not sure how we do that. At the moment, we've largely been, you get some publicity and you get a bit of spike in donations. And then yep. you, you know, we're doing all right. I mean, we've raised we've raised a, a good sum of money in 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 a, in a couple of weeks. I suppose that I might even talk to you about this afterwards. <laughs> you know, how we get some help, or what 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 maybe a strategy about you know if we, we all agree it's a good idea about getting that getting uh, getting money. In. Mm. Yeah, that's um, that's definitely the focus I think at the moment. 
So right now, if you're watching this, if you're a small, medium, large enterprise and you wish to sponsor an NHS trust or an or, uh, NHS organisation that's near you that needs support, you can do that um, through Oliver Bailey. And we'll give you, the, we will share the links for the Just Giving page shortly. Um, and even if you want to sponsor you know, a small amount of money, whatever you are able to contribute to this cause right now, um, what is the link for this, Oliver? What's the Just Giving page that you've got at the moment? I'm happy for anyone to phone phone me. So we, we've got uh, an email address, which is on. So we've got a website, which is www.harvestforheroes.com. Harvest, F-O-R, heroes.com. You can uh, donate through that. There's a link from there to the Just Giving site. Um, we have an Instagram, Harvest for Heroes, where there's video clips and pictures of nurses and, and you know, some really good content on there. We have a Just Giving page, Harvest for Heroes in Just Giving, but again, you can get that through the website. We're on Twitter. Um, and uh, we, uh, Oliver at harvestforheroes.com is my email address. Anyone can ring me up. You can give people my mobile number. They can ring me up. We just want to be doing a good thing. Uh, and if anyone wants to be involved in that, um, then I will talk to them and we'll work out a plan, um, you know, whether it's sponsoring a hospital or doing, sponsoring a, a care home or donating a fiver. You know, my lines of communication are open and every time I have a conversation with someone around what we're doing, whoever it may be, I feel, I feel good about it. So, you know, that, that's how they can help and, or, or I'd be happy to talk to anyone. And you talk about, Oliver, the fact that you feel good about it. it. People are giving and they can see where this is going to. Like you say, it's been on the news, it's been on the radio. Uh, but it's not just for now. This is supporting these people moving forward. So for them to donate to that in any way, shape or form is going to make them feel good at the same time. Do you know what, Oliver? Absolutely. Thank you for today. Thank you for what you're doing. Please continue doing this. It's needed. Um, and, you know, for team building ideas and, and teamwork examples this i think what you've done is going to be a phenomenal case study for the people working in the team i think it's going to be a phenomenal case study for other people looking at the way this team comes together and works and like you say looking back and looking at the failures and successes out of what you're doing now so that you can get to more people in the future and continue to grow this and turn it into something you know, even bigger and even more magnificent than it is right now phenomenal thank you appreciate it Nathan, I really appreciate uh, your support and it's lovely to talk to you and I appreciate you distilling uh, for the listeners my ramblings and we're having a lovely time, uh, we're having a lovely time doing this. So uh, yeah, we're, we're good vibes all around. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And for those of you um, that are listening, go to the Just Giving page, find Oliver Bailey, make a donation um, because you, you know it's absolutely the right thing to do at this point and I look forward to catching up with you on the next interview. Thanks very much.